Okay, full confession. When we first heard that St. Christopher was the patron saint of surfers, we honestly thought it was a joke, but apparently, it's actually a thing. The first point about St. Christopher we should make is that we have absolutely zero verifiable historical evidence of his existence. True, that doesn't mean he didn't exist, but we only have legends to tell us about his life. The legends will say that the person who became a popular intercessor for safe travels lived sometime in the 200s or 300s AD. He was powerfully built, very tall and strong, with a rather fierce face. You might also see him represented with a dog's head in some depictions, but that's a story for another time. Christopher's goal in life was to serve the most powerful king. He first signed up with the king of his homeland in the region of Canaan. That changed when he saw the king make the sign of the cross and mention the devil. If this king is afraid of the devil, Christopher thought, then the devil is more powerful, so I'll serve him. Leaving the king's service, he eventually was walking on a road that had a cross on one side. A band of thieves were nearby, and their leader called himself the devil. That got Christopher's attention. However, the devil refused to walk on the side of the road where the cross was. It was then that Christopher realized that if he wanted to serve the most powerful king, then he was called to serve Christ. He was later baptized by a wise hermit and began his ministry by a dangerously deep, fast-moving river. With his size and strength, Christopher could greatly assist travelers in their crossing. One day, a small child asked Christopher to carry him across. The further Christopher went, the heavier the child became. By the time they reached the opposite side, Christopher was worn out. The young boy then reveals himself to be the Christ child, and that when Christopher carried him, he carried the weight of the world. This story explains the most frequent depiction of the saint, and why he is called Christopher, which means Christ-bearer. St. Christopher is later said to have been martyred in Turkey. To this day, it's not unheard of for Catholics to ask his intercession for safe travels. Supposedly people did it while he was on earth, so why not continue doing it while he's in heaven? Some of these people would have been those who worked out at sea and traveled a lot on the ocean and lived in California in the 1960s. Looks like the medals of the saint were adopted by members of the surfing community, where they became popular. Surfing, which technically can count as a form of traveling, is not without its risks. There's dangerous sea creatures, waves that can become overwhelming, especially to the inexperienced, rip currents, and believe it or not, a lot of injuries result from surfers getting hit by their own boards or the boards of others. It makes sense to say a prayer for protection. After all, when you surf, you just want to have fun and come out unscathed. Or at least that's what we at RCT wanted to do when we went surfing once. Also a story for another time. Anyway, we don't know how much genuine faith and devotion came from the medal's rise in popularity in the 60s. It might have been really nothing more than just a fad, because popularity waned in the 1970s. Nowadays, you can still find St. Christopher medals for sale online and at shops along the California coastline. But perhaps it's time for a reboot. You know, hang 10, then pray 10. Hail Mary's. Make surfers Catholic again? Wipe out? Sinning? Ride the waves of God's mercy and love? Okay, yeah, we'll stop now. Congratulations to Ricardo Rodriguez and Irony Matt for excellent responses on the previous question scenario. Let's say Hollywood decides to make a movie about St. Christopher. Who should they cast in the lead role of the titular saint? And for more delightful yet random Catholic videos like this one, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.